Hey Collective, welcome to Queen Airbender Tarot. Today we are going to do your Lion's Gate channeled message. Now keep in mind this is a general reading, which means it cannot possibly apply to every single person that is watching. But if you would like a personal reading, all of the information will be left in the description box below. In case you are new to the channel, welcome, come on in. And in case you're returning, thank you for joining me again today. And I hope that you all are doing well. I'm actually really excited to do this reading. You guys know for like months, I've been talking about the Lionsgate portal, which is, you guys know, is a very powerful time. There's a lot of alignments coming up. Well, it is. All these, you have a lot of planets that are in alignment. You have a lot of energies that are in alignment. Your life purpose is about to come into alignment. It's 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 very potent time to get in tune with your spirituality and your own purpose. This is gonna be a time when a lot of people are gonna wake up to their purpose. And I'm gonna I just wanna share this really quickly because I'm seeing this with a lot of people, right? you are going to feel very tired. You're going to feel very exhausted. And I know that sounds like, well, this doesn't sound like something positive at all, but it's like when you feel yourself feeling tired and exhausted, look at the areas where you're feeling tired and exhausted. Like say, for instance, with your job, if you're constantly going to a job and you find yourself calling off a lot, or you find that it's very hard for you to get up out of the bed because you're just dreading to go to work, really look at that because you're feeling like that for a reason. You're feeling like that because your soul knows that it's time It's time for you to wrap up this cycle with that situation. It's time for you to move on to different endeavors. And I'm not saying just drop your job and quit and, and things like that, which some of you, I feel like a lot of you all will be putting in resignations, okay? <laughs> not only in jobs, but also in your love life and the other areas that are no longer making you happy. I'm even hearing resignations with your health. Like if you've been saying like, you know how typically when people start, um, getting in their mind and saying like, okay, I'm going to start working on things like that. And they're like, okay, I'll start Monday. Okay, I'll start Monday. And then five Mondays from now, you still haven't started. You are done. You're resigning from that that procrastination. You're, you're getting ready to be active. Hands down, you're getting ready to be active. You're getting ready to put things into motion. I'm seeing people like writing down ideas for meal preps. I know a lot of you guys are. I'm seeing it. Okay. I'm also seeing, like I said, something with jobs. Like some of you all are thinking about just flat out just resigning before you even find something. And it's because your soul is no longer aligned with where you are. When we even, working somewhere is not just punching a clock, paying bills, but that's what a lot of people have been doing. Like I said this before on my channel, me and my, my sister friend, we call people who just go through the motion zombie bots. Because you're moving brainlessly like a zombie. And I'm not saying you guys are zombie bots, but we're saying like, you know how zombies just... They just have one goal, get to something. And, and for a lot of people, like, get to the money. And then a robot, like, you're doing things robotically, like, just routinely, like a machine. That's a zombie bot. A lot of people are in zombie bot, you know, mentality right now. Again, I'm not insulting you all. What I'm saying is that's the mentality because you know you have a goal, which is to pay your bills, provide for your family. But then you're doing something that's very routine, so you're used to it, so you keep doing it. But it's not, you're not passionate about it. That's not where your heart is. You get what I'm saying? And that goes back to what I was saying with zombie bots. Zombies don't really have hearts per se. You know, it doesn't work because they're dead. They're just functioning off of whatever energy. Robots don't have hearts. They're just functioning because there's a program. So a lot of people are living in programs right now. Those programs and those, those past ways of doing things, they're coming down. A lot of people, you're going to be feeling exhausted. And I feel, because I've, I've even felt that with myself. But, you know, I do a lot of modality. I tap into a lot of things to keep my energy aligned. I meditate quite a bit. I, even now, I'm meditating more, keeping myself grounded. You guys know I'm air and earth. So, it's, it's a little bit more easier for me to keep myself grounded because I'm a Taurus moon, Virgo rising, Taurus Mercury, you know. So, I have a lot of earth in my chart. So, it's easy for me to stay grounded. You know, my sun is Gemini, North Node, Gemini. But... Uh, that earthy energy I'm very grateful for. So if you are sp someone who doesn't have any earth in your chart, you are going to have to put in more work to stay grounded. Because again, these alignments of the planets and things like that, it's going to require you to do that because it's going to kind of feel like you're floating off into space. You're going to feel like you're all over the place a lot. So make sure you're staying grounded. Your sea salt baths, um, your spiritual baths, taking your feet, you know, and just digging it in the soil barefoot, going outside, just even in, just in your backyard, just put them feet in that damn grass, in the sand, you know, in the water if you don't have water in your chart because water is detoxifying, cleansing, purging. Do those things. It's a, right now it's going to be a time where you're really going to have to put in the extra effort to keep yourself balanced. Right now it's all about balance. Now, as I was saying, I've been talking for weeks, months about the 8-8 portal because, again, this is a very positive time for uh, manifestation, clearing, you know, calling in the things that you need. 
But also keep in mind, we are literally going from the 8-8 portal to the 9-9 portal. I don't hear a lot of people talking about this because everybody is really fixated on the 8-8 portal right now. And, that, you know, we have that once a year. And that is probably one of the most powerful gateways in any cycle, in any, you know, lunar or um, calendar year cycle. But we also have the 9-9 because we're leaving literally out of 8-8, that Lionsgate portal, and going into 9-9 Mercury retrograde. Okay. September 9th is the very first day of Mercury retrograde, and then that ends on October 2nd. So that's why I've been saying this for a while, from 8-8 eight, eight to 9-9. Nine, nine, oh, yeah, this is going to be a busy time for everybody, not just people who are spiritually inclined or who are going on a spiritual journey. Everybody. You guys know what retrogrades talk about. It talks about the communication, the mental, the travel, and it also talks about things that have not been resolved. So peep this, right? Let's check, check out what the queen is saying. You're going from a time of heavy manifestation, calling in things with the AA portal, and then now you're going to be tested with that 9-9 portal to see, okay, everything that you called in, are you sure you want it, or are you going to backslide into that 9-9 retrograde energy? You get what I'm saying? So what I'm going to do, you guys know I typically get the sun and the moon because the sun is things that are coming in, um, a brand new day, transmutation, healing, light, health, and then we're going to get the hermit instead of the moon because the moon is things unknown, things we don't have clarity about, and it's also about the past energy. But we're going to get the hermit because the hermit goes on a spiritual journey, right? And that's what this retrograde is about. Have you healed or what is it that you do need to heal? Because the hermit is seeking knowledge, the hermit is seeking wisdom. Also that 9-9 portal, okay? With that, with the retrograde, it is in a sign of Virgo. And the hermit resonates with the energy of Virgo. So we're literally going to get the sun, because the sun is Leo, okay? And we are in Leo, Lion's Gate. And then we're going to get the hermit, and we're going to get the card that comes before and after both. Now, you guys know as always, when I meditate over the energy, I start off with the messages that I pick up for you all. And when I was meditating over the energy, the song that I heard was Obsession by Omarion. I'll leave the link to that song in the description box below, so you can listen to it following the reading if you so choose to. Just want to toss this out here. Um, Omarion happens to be a Scorpio. So you could have very strong Scorpio placements in your chart. Or there could be something you guys need to check and see what sign or what planet your Pluto is in. You know, something with Pluto-related energy could be connected to y'all. And I know that's not necessarily connected to Jupiter, but I'm hearing Jupiter too. Something with Jupiter. Check what, you know, these placements in your chart, what sign it's in, um, what's going on in those houses. Because I feel like something with Scorpio and there's something related to Jupiter. There could be some significant um, transitions in your planet. And you're in your chart concerning those things. Also, I seen when I was meditating angel number 709 and 730. So again, angel number 709 and 730. I always tell you guys to Google angel number. You say it specifically, angel number 709 and angel number 730. And I always ask you guys to leave in the comment section how that relates to you all. Because just to get random numbers, I'm, it's not random. The universe is sending it for a reason. So I know it's going to resonate for somebody. Because you guys, I've seen a lot of people leave those messages and how and they share with you all and with myself how it resonates. I definitely feel like in this time frame, especially with this portal, this I'm talking about this portal is wide open, okay? To get those numbers, it resonates for a lot of people, I'm sure of it, okay? Um, I'm definitely getting something with abundance with that seven and, and spiritual, because seven is a very spiritual number also, as well as nine. So tap into that energy. And again, leave in the comment section how it resonates for you all, because I, I do feel like it's going to resonate with a lot of people. I also heard a message saying that now is the time to honor your ancestors. And then honoring your ancestors is going to help you heal unresolved situations and energy. I feel like this has to do with that hermit. Again, going back into Mercury retrograde. So you're going from Lionsgate to Mercury retrograde. Okay? That's, that's one hell of a shift. A hell of a shift. We know how powerful all the retrogrades is. But Mercury stands out the most to people. You hear about that the most. Because the things that you say, the things that you put out as far as communication, the news... It affects you long term. That's why we hear about it so much because it's a very social retrograde. Mercury retrograde is. So honoring ancestors, when I say honoring ancestors, it's like your your great, great, greats and things like that. Finding out history about your family because we all have ancestral things that are passed down, like health stuff. Um, I A while ago, before I even started my spiritual journey, I found out that there was things in my family in regards to abundance. Like people who would start businesses in my family, they would never take off. They would start it. They would have amazing backing, amazing foundation, but it really wouldn't go anywhere. 
And so I realized that there was something in my family in regards to abundance and things like that. And I was told even before I started doing what I'm doing now that I would be the one to break it. And I, and I see that being very true. So you need to find out, because I'm hearing that someone needs to find out, a lot of you all need to find out what's going on or what are habits, something that is continuously being seen throughout your lineage, something also with your bloodline. And, and as I'm saying bloodline, I'm hearing like stuff with your health. That's not to say it's like something negative, but say for instance, in my family, on my mother's side, it's a lot of high blood pressure, diabetes, cancer. So you need to figure those type of things out so you can monitor your health. Because I, like I said, I was also getting stuff with health, like, you know, um, grounding yourself and things like that. That helps align your energy. It helps you stay rooted and conscious to, to your day to day. It helps you stay present. That's the more important thing. It helps you stay present. Okay. Um, so Tap into ancestral stuff. Like, say, for instance, if you don't have, like, an ancestral table. You know what movie makes me think about that? And I was so amazed with it. And I was like, whoever wrote this is super dope because they're, they're in tune. But they're trying to help the youth also. Um, the movie was Coco. If you've never watched that movie, watch that movie. I will watch a damn Disney movie all day because there's a lot of hidden messages in these movies. And you guys know that. But they with Coco, they were really, really big on honoring their ancestors and it was like if you didn't honor your ancestors on a certain day and things like that the ancestor will be forget forgotten forever and they wouldn't be able to cross over and heal and their spirit wouldn't be able to evolve really watch that movie if you've never watched it i kid you not that movie is dope it really is and by honoring them they were bringing they had like photos of the family members and things like that so they can keep that energy and i'm hearing something about that to help you heal and i feel like that's that's what that retrograde energy that i'm picking up Cause it's going to be something that's going to come to the surface, but I feel like it's past stuff. Like say for instance, if you have issues with relationships, you feel like you keep picking the wrong person over and over again. You keep letting the wrong people in your, in your life, romantically, especially look back at your ancestors and find out or talk to your parents. And if you don't have parents who are alive, someone who's closest to that age group and see, you know, ask questions. Like say for instance, yeah, grandma and grandpa could have stayed together forever, but that doesn't mean they had a healthy relationship. Maybe they just stayed together because they had 11, 12 children, and that's what they did in that generation. And it's about those people before them and before them. You know, things like that. Because it, it, it's a pattern. There's character patterns, and that's something that can help you heal. And knowing that those type of patterns, now you're more aware of how it resonates with you and how you can change it. You get what I'm saying? You guys get what I'm saying. So also I heard, okay, so I've seen a vision of a sunrise. But it was interesting because it looked like a sun. i seen a sun coming up very slow. But then I seen it going back down at the same time. So with that message, I heard that you all need to be a little more, try to be more optimistic. Instead of seeing things as going down, like something is ending, see it as going up. Even if the sun is coming up, you're still making progress. That's what I'm hearing. Be more optimistic. Don't see it as like, you know how they have the analogy of see the glass as half full instead of half empty. See, the, see life is progressing. Even if it's slow progression, see progression. Because when you all, you know, when you see things that way, then you're altering that energy to make it go that way. We are manifestors, especially in this time. See, I don't care how fucked up the situation is, because it's gonna be fucked up stuff. That's how life is. See the, where the positive can seep in somewhere, and that's what you fixate. That's what if you want to fixate on something, that's what you fixate on. That's what you focus on. That's that's the overall message with that. Now, also, I heard something about color therapy, and I'm getting more so with chakras. Like, say, for instance, if you're having, like, stomach or gut issues, wear things that are, like, yellow and orange because that's your solar plexus and sacral chakra. If you're feeling lightheaded and dizzy all the time and you feel like you just feel like you're just floating and all over the place, red, okay? Because red is the root. It keeps you grounded. So I got something with that message also. And then also I heard something about be around water. Also, drink a lot of water during this time, guys. Water is transmutation. It transmutes energy. It also, again, flushes, detoxes, cleanses, purifies. So, again, you're getting ready to go into a time of extreme manifestation. So, you want to flush out all that heavy energy that's stagnant in you so you can allow the good shit to come in. Okay? A lot of water. Drink a lot of water. I'm big on alkaline water. Okay? I notice the difference. I'm a huge water drinker, and I notice the difference in that. Like, if I drink water, I, I, my water, I purchase reverse osmosis water, so I drink that. But then when I get alkaline water, I notice the difference. Like immediately I have to go to the bathroom and I notice cleansing and detoxing. Like I can feel it. You can feel the difference. So if you can get alkaline water, 
try it, try it. I would suggest it. And then also I heard something about crystals. So some of you all, you guys know I always keep my crystals, you know, on top of my cards to charge them up. I put them in the sun, sage, all that good stuff, meditate over them. I always charge my cards and things like that. You will never not see crystals all over, you know, my space because that helps heighten the energy. If you guys are looking for crystals right now and, and you don't know where to start or you want to know where what will support your energy at this moment, I literally heard a patchy tear. I don't even have a patchy tear crystal. I had it a while ago. I have no clue where it is. I think my son probably has it. But I heard a patchy tear, and that's very specific. Again, because I don't even have any patchy tears, so I know it doesn't relate to me, but it may also be a message for me as well. So again, if you're looking for a crystal during this time, I'm hearing something very strongly about an Apache tear, okay? So also look that up because you guys know all crystals have reason, you know, purposes and stuff to it. So go ahead and look that up. And again, leave in the comment section how whatever that description is and let it share with us how that relates to you and how you feel like that may be helpful for you along your journey during this time, okay? So enough of me running my mouth about the intro. And see, as I move this, this kind of makes me think about Apache tear a little bit. You have snowflake obsidian, so some of you guys may want to get that. Obsidian is always good for grounding, so I'm definitely getting energy. And you know, it makes a lot of sense. You're going to need grounding during this time. Again, because you're going from a lion's gate portal to a retrograde. Immediately, it's like smack dab. This It's like they're hitting each other. So that's going to be very transformative time for everyone. Again, don't feel like you're just the one that the universe is bullying and picking on. Everyone is going to feel it. Everyone's going to feel it during this time, okay? So we're going to change the cards at the top and the bottom of the deck. We will do the same for your clarifying deck. And you guys know, as always, there's absolutely no reversals in either one of my decks right now. But once I start shuffling, if I get reversals, I will read them as such. Currently, at the bottom of the deck, come on now. I can't make this up. I'm telling you, you all are going through a time of manifestation. She is well off. She lacks and needs for nothing. You understand me? You got Libra, Taurus. Aries energy here with the Empress. There's a lot of stuff with the mother, um, like like feminine energy, definitely some positive manifestation. You got a rabbit right here that talks about luck and abundance, transmutation. You got a butterfly. You know before it's a butterfly, it's a caterpillar. So there's growth. There's evolution. I don't know why I'm hearing um, stag, but instead of stag like the animal, I'm hearing stagnation like somebody, because even he he's looking at something that has his attention, but he's, his body is going this way, but he's looking back in another direction. So somebody could be dealing with um, topics in regards to stagnation that may be blocking their evolution. Because if you look at his body, he's going this way, but he's looking back and he's facing that butterfly. So it's something that someone is not putting into action. And it's some type of stagnation there. But what I love about this is that, look here, when you're the empress, that means you are on top of your shit, male or female. You are on top of your shit. You are definitely manifesting. Look how she's holding this. You see how it's glowing? Something has come full circle. Something in you all's life has come full circle during this time. And I want you to notice that she has on this green and gold. That's definitely talking about abundance. A lot of you are monetary. You're calling in some monetary stuff right now. The next three weeks. And like I said, this is not just the Lionsgate portal. We're talking about going from Lionsgate portal into retrograde. The next three weeks, and that will be a three-week time frame. Within the next three weeks, you're going to see something come full circle for sure. You're starting off major arcana, so that's a definite energy. Very, very positive. Also, when it comes to relationships and love, a lot of you guys are getting ready to meet your companion, your long-term consort. Because for every empress, there's an emperor, vice versa, same sex, however it applies to you. For those of you who are already married, it looks like there's going to be a lot of contemplation about how to grow and evolve in your relationship because there's definitely some changes, okay? There's some changes in that relationship because even though we are one with our partner, if you're married or in a long-term relationship, you still are your own individual person. So that a lot of you all will be reflecting on how do you grow spiritually but also maintain equilibrium in your relationship, Okay. So let's part the deck so we can shuffle. Look at that. Three of Cups. So with this energy, wow. Okay, I told you. This is confirmation. Three. Three weeks. This three-week time portal is going to be very, very busy, okay? You literally have the Empress three, and then you have Three of Cups. A lot of feminine energy right here. Oh, my God. Okay. Then I say we're going to get the sun and moon. I mean, not the moon, but the um hermit. Look at that at the very back. So, yeah, you guys are getting ready to go on some type of journey for sure spiritual journey and that's what i said there's a spiritual journey here so even if you are in a relationship i do feel like this is a message that 
you and your partner may feel a little off, like you you may feel like you're missing a beat with each other. Because I feel like if you you the one watching, you're here for a reason. You were called to this reading. You're doing some type of spiritual awakening, some type of spiritual journey, and it may affect your relationship because you're trying to keep again something about equilibrium. But I feel like you and your person are going to work things out because if you notice the two cups, the two, you know, two of cups is a, a couple um, soulmates. They're pouring into that one. So you guys will get back on the same path. But I feel like in the beginning, this is just going to feel like things are kind of off, you know, off kilter a bit because they're floating. And, and I've been saying since the beginning, you're reading groundedness. So, you know, you need to find out how to ground yourself like how she is. She's standing in that grass. Didn't I say take your shoes off, ground yourself? Okay, and I definitely said something about the root chakra. And if you notice by her lower half, she has that red belt, and that red is that root chakra, and it's on her lower body. So it's definitely an energy of needing to ground yourself during this time. Okay, so let's go through a couple shuffles, and we already just seen that hermit, so we're definitely gonna make sure we shuffle quite a bit so we can get up. Somebody's already married, or there's gonna be talks. Uh oh, and it went back in. I just seen the four of wands. Okay, so it went in, so we don't want to talk about look at that. Look here. As soon as we parted, another major arcana, the devil, Capricorn energy. So there's, like I said, there's going to be some type of temptation. And I feel more so like this is definitely, this is talking about the Lionsgate energy that you're going to be in, manifesting. And then this is going to be that retrograde, something coming back from the past, okay? Something that you, you're you going to be tempted to go back and have some type of backsliding. If you notice, their backs are facing each other. Okay, and that goes back to what I was saying. And both of these are major arcanas, and that's these are major transits here. Lionsgate, retrograde. So you're gonna be tested. Do you really want this stuff that you said you want to come full circle, or are you gonna be tested by things from the past and allow that back into your life? Somebody definitely could be coming back. You know, if you notice them, it's like they're dancing with the devil here. I always tell you guys the eyes are the gateway to the soul, but the fact that you can't see his eyes is like it's something that you're not gonna be expecting that's gonna come back. To kind of test you. There's going to be tests. Look. Possibly a heartbreak. Someone who broke your heart in the past. Or there could also be something in regards to someone who's passed on. Because I'm hearing that also. And But this will be someone who's already passed on, right? This is this is not a new, you know, passing. I'm not getting that. Someone who passed on. Possibly in Capricorn season. You guys know Capricorn season is um, December, January. That could be the case. And we got another three. Remember, you just said the Empress, that's three, and then you had three of cups, that's three, and now you have a three of swords. So I'm telling you, over the next three weeks, there's going to be a lot of temptation to kind of backslide, because that's what retrograde is all about, backsliding or needing to focus on the things that keep you in a place of feeling stuck and not being able to move forward. But you guys are strong during this time, okay? Again, strength, Leo. During this time, you guys are walking in your power, very strong. Ooh, somebody getting some money, too. Very strong, very much in your power. And I said that with the with the Empress, there's a time of um manifesting more monetary stuff. Something that you've been working long and hard for, it's coming into your life. You're manifesting that. And then you got the Six of Cups. That's why I said, I'm getting with that devil. I feel like there's a person from your past because the Six of Cups talks about someone that you have history with, okay? Possibly also something that happened in June, specifically in cancer season. Cancer season starts in June. Somebody's coming back or somebody tried to come back. You may have cut this person off, but they're going to come back again and, and retrograde. I can tell you that. Now, also, this could have something to do with something that happened. Mm, something that happened six years ago. And I know it's like, well, who the hell will remember that? But I'm telling you, you're going to remember because I'm noticing how you got these sunflowers right here. And sunflowers is the Leo flower. And we're in Leo season. So it's something that happened in June. Someone whose birthday is in June. Something with someone that either there was a separation six months ago I mean six years ago six months ago some of y'all can also have a six year old with someone that you're no longer with also okay something with six there somebody could be a life path number six or you could be in a personal year six I always tell you guys look that I told you it's have to do with love told you so this is someone that you had a child or children with or somebody from your past that you you know this person was a soulmate and this person's coming back. <laughs> Hands down. This person's coming back. And that's that devil energy. Because this is someone who possibly is not healthy for you. Because the devil also talks about toxicity. This person is not healthy for you. And this is like, okay, you're going to be tested during this time to see. If you're saying, like, I want to move all this negative stuff out of my life. Negative people, negative circumstances. The universe is going to allow that stuff to come back into your life to test you. To say, are you sure? 
Are you sure? Because the retrogrades are definitely about test too. You, baby, you will get tested down, okay? Yep. Ten of Wands, heavy loads, heavy burdens. And you see how I flipped it, flipped up this way? So it's like a lot of you guys are getting ready to drop this heavy load, drop this heavy burden. Keep in mind, Ten of Numerology is also about ending. So you guys are putting an end to whatever it was that you were willingly carrying. Because in the Ten of Wands, he was willingly carrying these wands. He didn't have to. That was a choice. A lot of y'all are dropping those wands now. Yep, walking away. Absolutely. Eight of Cups, and we are in the eighth month. I love this. I'm telling you, you guys are walking away. No longer attaching yourself to things that are emotionally draining. Because cups is the emotions of feelings. So we are in the eighth month. Lionsgate stars in eight, eight, today. Okay? And if you notice right here, <laughs> something with three, I'm telling you, the next three weeks are going to be busy. Because of these eight cups, you got one, two, three spilt over. We already just had three of cups. You had the Empress, which was three. You had the three of swords. A lot of three energy. So three... Three-week time period is going to be busy for a lot of us. Okay? So let's go ahead. We want the sun and the card that comes before and the card that comes after, and we want the hermit. Okay? See? This is going to happen soon. We're already in Lionsgate. It didn't even take us no time to get there. So the first card, wow, again, you guys watched me shuffle, and this wasn't here. So it's going to be very um, influential topics is going to be surrounding relationships, for sure, and people that you need to let go of. Or people who need to let the hell go of you. Because you got the two of cups and then you got the hangman. Major arcana, so that's a definite energy. Right behind you, you got this damn king of pentacles again. So for some of you guys, something could have involved a Taurus. You could be a Taurus. Something could have happened in Taurus season. Taurus season is April and May. Okay? So next we are looking for the hermit and the card that comes before and the card that comes after. For the collective. Wow. A lot of three energy there. Next three weeks, I'm going to tell you right now, the next three weeks are going to be busy. I'm going to tell you right now, the card that's coming out before it, I love this. I love this. Look at this. So you have the hermit. Look what's right in front of you. Look how they walk into each other. Leo, Leo. Leo season goes into Virgo season. You hear me? Look at this. And then right behind it, you have the Knight of Swords. And behind that, you have the Seven of Cups. Illusion, confusion, feeling scattered, but also more than anything... It's the energy of like having choices, having options. The very last card that we see sticking up right here is the Nine of Wands, the Wounded Warrior. Some of you guys are needing, and, and keep in mind, Mercury Retrograde starts in September 9. So a lot of you guys are really focused on moving forward and moving out of this heavy energy. Because there's a heavy energy with the Nine of Wands. <laughs> this is insane. So I like this energy because going into it, and this is how I was when I was holding it, but this is how I have to lay it on the table. I'm just being guided to you're going very, you're going to be much stronger than you felt like you initially were going into Virgo season. You, I feel like you're cutting off. You've put up a fight to heal some things. You're cutting a lot of stuff off because Knight's already going into battle, coming out of battle. He's going into battle. So you guys have fought long and hard, okay? And you have acquired some type of wisdom. I don't know what's going this way. You've acquired some type of wisdom during your journey because the Hermit is going on a spiritual journey. You've had people who have tried to block your success. You got a snake there. Snakes could be like somebody literally snaking you, being sneaky. But snakes is also talking about transformation. When that snake sheds the skin, it becomes a bigger snake. Okay? So a lot of you guys have transformed and you're transmuting. And you took it took a lot of strength. And But here's the thing. You've pushed through it. Fearlessly. Because look at him. He's getting ready to jump off a cliff. There's nothing down there for him to land on. He's just going for it fearlessly. He has all his armor on. Yeah, and I just heard the armor of God. You guys are definitely being protected. Somebody's first, middle, last initial could be A, E, V, or H. I'm also getting K. Let's see. Those are initials I'm getting so far. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and get your clarifiers. Wow. Bottom of the deck, full of fortune, major arcana. It is already faded and destined for you guys to look at this. Wow. For you guys to have some type of success with your healing. All of them have books, which means it has already been written in the stars. It has already been written in the cosmos. You guys have healing coming. Wow. And remember I was talking about with that devil energy, something about Capricorn. Some of you guys are going to see something that you put into motion right now. It's going to play out in Capricorn season. Again, December, January. And I'm saying that because you see how it looks like he has a compass. Compasses gives us direction. And if you notice, you got this devil-like figure again. So it's making me feel like moving forward into Capricorn season by the end of the year, going into the beginning of next year, whatever you're putting into motion right now, you're going to see positive, okay, shifts in it because you have the will of fortune, something faded and destined, and it's going to be abundant. I'm, I'm getting abundance. Abundance, abundance, definitely with money, 
Also, when it comes to love, even if you're single, somebody that you're fated and destined to meet, they're coming to see your reality. For sure. Again, I'm noticing there's a lot of transformation because you got a snake here and then you have a snake right here. So there's definitely transformation. Okay? So that's part of the next week of shuffle. Four of Pentacles. Now, you guys know the Four of Pentacles for me is like holding on for dear life. This could be seen as a, a, a greedy king or queen. But I, and also, and remember, we did see the King of Pentacles, and that's Taurus. So something involving an April Taurus or something that happened in April. You could have been trying to hold on to finances, but it's some, something got in the way of that. Also, like I said, you could be dealing with a Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, or that could be you. Yeah, because I'm getting a rise, and also because you see how there's a pinnacle on top of his head. Somebody's rise could be Taurus, Sun or Moon, because it's on his feet. The Moon is the lower. Also, somebody with strong Taurus placements could be involved here. You or a loved one. But whatever the case, it's like with these two next to each other, it does look like abundance is going to be yours. Like you're going to be able, whatever it is you've been putting in to work for, it's going to be yours. You have the control over it. You have the power over it. For some of y'all, you're going to have power over how your finances come in, how you make money. Because it's going to be something that you put out there. Some of you guys are going to be stepping into entrepreneurial um, venues as well. I want to go ahead and get the sun first because we are currently in, you know, Leo season. So I want to get that sun energy first. Let's see what we get. We're going to clarify the two of cups. As well as the hangman. I definitely know there's somebody from your past coming back. When you get these two cards together, somebody from your past is coming back. And like I said, that's that retrograde energy. Yeah, it's already mingling in with this energy. I feel it. You guys definitely got somebody from the past reaching out to you. Didn't I say reaching out to you? Look at this cup reaching out. <laughs> so like first, middle, last initial. W-M-T-J-C-U-H. You or this person, if you, whoever you think about first and they have those initials, that's who the hell finna reach out to you, okay? Bottom of the deck, somebody who stabbed you in the back in the past, something has ended with this person, so I definitely feel like this is someone that you don't have a connection with, but somehow, energetically, you guys are still connected. You guys still have energy cores connected to each other. Ten of swords being stabbed in the back of betrayed. Again, ten of numerology talks about endings, so this is someone that you cut off, but they, they you can cut them off, but energetically, they're still attached to you somehow, because you guys are soulmates. And when I say soulmates, that doesn't mean you have to be with this person because, you know, we have many soulmates. So this is just one of your soulmates who has not let go of you energetically, okay? So let's get a... Damn, okay? Clarify it for the Two of Cups, Five of Pentacles. Absolutely, absolutely. Somebody who left you out in the cold is going to try to reach back. Also, I'm going to say because we are currently in Leo season and you have the Sun card here and this is the 8-8 portal, I feel like some of you guys in your relationship, you may feel like you want to leave the situation because, look, you got a couple there, a couple there. You may want to leave the situation or you may feel like your person has checked out and you're confused about what to do. Do I stay? Do I hang in there? Hang in. Do I hang in there and try to work things out or do I move on? Also, what I'm getting is a flip-flop as well with your finances. If you feel like you've been doing everything alone, you may have somebody who's going to come in and support you and help you. Okay, I'm getting that also. Now, if you're single, I, it doesn't mean it has to be a romantic person. You have somebody who's going to come in and assist you financially if you've been going through some type of hardship during this time is what I'm getting. Bottom of the deck, you got the page of cups in reverse. Hmm. So all pages are messengers. And for it to be in reverse, it's like some type of communication. Yeah, something with a Pisces. This is Pisces. You got Pisces right here also. Pisces Aquarius. Um... Somebody who's coming in with some type of communication. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm getting here. So some of you guys may feel like you want to walk away from someone because someone is being emotionally immature. Because cups is the emotions and feelings and pages are you typically youthful and young. So someone could be emotionally immature. At one point, you guys were seeing eye to eye like they are. But in, in like recently, you may feel as though, okay, this person gives me no choice but to feel like I'm alone or I'm leaving a situation. And I feel like this is going back to what I was saying. Like a lot of you guys are going on a spiritual journey right now. And you and your person may feel detached from each other. I'm going to tell you, I'm also getting with this hangman. They're telling you to hold on, just hold on for a minute. Because I feel like this is just the energy of this um, portal. That's making you feel this way. You guys are not seeing eye to eye like you used to. Because you're changing. You're evolving. You're evolving and you may feel like you guys don't get each other anymore. But just try to hang in there for a little bit. Especially if you know there's genuine love in a relationship. Just try to hang in there. Because I do feel like this is just the energy of, of this moment. Okay? And I feel like somebody could be feeling as though, like if you're going on some spiritual journey, somebody could be kind of sassing you or acting like what you believe in is kind of foolish 
Like if you're getting, because I, I hear people say all the time, like, crystals are just pretty rocks. They're stupid. It doesn't make sense. I hear people say stuff like that. So say, for instance, if you get into crystals and things like that, somebody will say something like, your person will say something like that because they're not into that and they feel like it's silly or a waste of money. And that may insult you or you may feel like, okay, just because you don't believe in it doesn't mean that you should knock me. It's something like that, you know, where you feel like this person isn't being supportive. You know, but again, I feel like they will. They're going to get on board or they're going to be more understanding. Because if you notice, as she's walking away, he's chasing behind her, which means he doesn't want things to end. He or she doesn't want things to end. It's just they're not on the same page right now. Okay. Bottom of the deck again, page of cups. Let's get a clarifier for the hangman. Hangman for the collective. Let's get a clarifier for the hangman for the collective. Clarifier for the hangman. Okay. I see one flip up. Look at what you got there. Did we not have this earlier? Six of Cups. That's did I tell you? Hang in there. Because you guys are gonna have you guys on the reconcile. Look at him. He's giving a flowers. Like, I'm sorry, boo. I, I ain't mean to talk about what you believe in. I ain't mean to treat you like that. There's a reconciliation. Absolutely. And I know that because look at that. Both of my cups. And that cups, that's emotional energy. So that's telling you hang in there with this situation because this person. I feel like they're going to get it. Initially, they don't get it. You feel like you're alone in the situation, but they're going to get it. Because a lot. if you're watching this right now, I'm telling you, you're guided to watch it. Out of all the things that you're going to be watching right now, you're guided to watch it because you're going on a spiritual awakening. This this Lionsgate does that to a lot of people. So I do feel like you guys are going to come together, and that's what that hangman, hey, they're definitely telling you, like, hang in there. Now, also, I'm going to say, this is a card of reconciliations, right? I do feel like you guys are going to have somebody from your past coming back. Six of Cups is definitely history with someone. This is someone that you already know, but you may not, you know, they may not be in your energy right now, like physically. This person's going to try to come back in, okay? Bottom of the deck, you got three of wands, but look, you're going to tell this person, ain't no goddamn future here. Here you go again with these damn threes. The next three weeks going to be busy, you hear? You've had the three of cups. You had the empress, the three. You had a three of wands. You had the three of swords. You have all these threes. Also, some of you guys may start seeing numbers of three nonstop. Three, three, three. That's the archangel. That's they're telling you archangels and spirit guys and you know your protectors and your guardians around you. They're like right here. So when you want something, you're trying to manifest something. They're right there to assist you. Like I'm talking about sitting on your lap down there. Okay. Also, I'm gonna tell you guys. Google angel number three, three, three. And leave in the comment section how that relates to you. Okay? This is this is a very spiritual time. And I'm telling you, three weeks. These next three weeks are going to be busy, for sure. Okay? So, let's get a clarifier for the strength card for this retrograde energy for the hermit. Okay? Ten of Wands, I told you, you're going to be tested. Ooh, I love it. Look at this. So, you got the strength card. It takes strength to carry all these wands, doesn't it? Told you. During this time, you are going to be tested. This is a test of your strength. Did I not say this? Again, going back to tens, tens are the end of a cycle. Look at this. He's they're walking in the same, they're walking towards each other. So during this time, everything that you have been through, this is one test after another, after another, after another. Whatever you have been tested by, you've passed the test. Flying damn colors. Look at these beautiful colors. You're going for she's walking from the dark and she's leaving the darkness behind and she's going into the light. Come on now. I can't make this up. You guys are gonna be tested during retrograde. You're gonna pass with flying fucking colors. For sure, hands down. Also, I want to go back to remember in the beginning when I said, would you have the Empress? And she had that red belt on. He does too. And you see there's a knot right here. And that the red, it looks strong like the strings are torn and withered. Some of you guys definitely need to ground yourself. Because the fact that it's like torn and shredded, somebody's root chakra really needs a lot of attention. There's a lot of free um, meditation, root chakra meditations here on YouTube. Also, I'm going to say again, sit in and sea salt baths because that's your lower chakra if you're sitting in a bathtub. Also, going to put your feet, dig those feet in the sand, dig those feet in the grass, dig those feet in the dirt. For sure. Ground yourself. Wear red socks. I know that sounds lame, but like I said, color therapy. Um, red ankle bracelets. You know, uh, toe rings with like red crystals in it. You know, a lot of people have stuff like that on Etsy shops and things like that. Go ahead and check into stuff like that. Bottom of the deck, you got the justice card reversed. The opposite of justice is injustice. So something that you felt like you weren't treated fairly about is going to come back to the surface during retrograde. And it's like something that, again, you may feel the need to fight for or protect yourself from. Also, I feel like during this time, something with court matters is going to come up or something with documentation because this also talks about contracts, documentation, paperwork as well. I always tell you guys, sword up is just sword down is no. So be careful about the things that you're signing during this time because you see how he has a sword up. A sword is communication and mental. 
it's a sword, but I'm, I'm literally seeing a sword transform into a pen. So be careful about the documents you sign during this time. Really pay attention to it because I want you to see how this is on the table. You see how on the table he has his lantern facing that. Like I need to really observe and pay attention to the details. Pay attention to the details of everything that you sign during this retrograde because, you know, it could it can affect you in the long term. Some type of contract where the wording is shady or sneaky because, again, the opposite of justice is injustice. In reverse, something is not right. Or there's some sneakiness that could be associated with it, right? So let's get a clarifier for your Knight of Swords. Damn, card flipped across the table. I'm going to pick it up just like it was, okay? Yep. So that's what I'm saying. Something that you have not healed from on an on emotional level is going to come to the surface during this retrograde. And that's typically what it is. So it's nothing to be fearful about. Because I'm going to say again, you're going to pass this test with flying colors. Um... And it's like you're going to be fighting or standing up for yourself. Like if you felt like emotionally in the past, you were allowing people to have control and power over you. Because kings and queens hold position of power, nobility, respect. They're all they're always well revered. In reverse, any king or queen in reverse, this person has been demoted, stripped of their title. And with this being cuffs and that's the emotions and feelings, some of you guys may have felt like emotionally you were giving people too much of your power, but you're not going to be doing that anymore. Not in this time. You put your arm on, head to toe, you're ready to go. And I know that because both of these cards right here, they let me know, like, you're no longer allowing people to emotionally manipulate you or have some power over your emotions. You're no longer doing that. You're fighting and protecting yourself, protecting your energy, protecting your space. I know that also because, like I said, the way these two are here together, it's like, I don't care what I have to do. I'm going to keep pushing through it. He's pushing through. He's carrying all this load by himself. And going through those things has made this person stronger. And that's where you all are. You're in a much stronger place. I feel like with this energy, this retrograde energy for a lot of you all is going to be emotional stuff. Because typically when you're going on a spiritual journey like the hermit does, it's because something has triggered something in you emotionally that has made you realize like, okay, I need to take care of things differently. I need to address things differently. And I feel like you guys are much stronger now in this time. Like I don't, I don't feel like you're going to allow people to treat you any kind of way. I'm definitely getting something with a, with love interest for sure. Because you got a lot of love-based stuff here. Like, I want you to see this. This whole top row, with the exception of the sun and the hangman, you have couples. Couple. A couple. A couple. You know what I mean? So, all of this energy is letting me know, like, for sure that when it comes to love-based stuff, a lot of you all may have been dealing with, somebody may definitely be dealing with a divorce because any king, queen, reverse, they're divorced or they're in some type of um, romantic separation. A lot of you all are dealing with situation when it comes to relationship stuff that has forced you to um, really go within because the hermit is someone who goes within. Also, somebody could be dealing with a relationship with a mother figure. I'm getting that also. It could be a mother figure who passed. Some of you guys during this around this time frame, you could be dealing with the passing or the anniversary of passing of a mother figure, either a grandmother, your actual mother, or an aunt who was like a mother figure to you. It's something with a strong female figure who who would be older than you, a matriarch or something like that. You could it, the anniversary of their passing could be coming up. They could be an air sign, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, or a water sign, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Or they could have passed during one of those time frames, right? During the air sign season or water sign season. I definitely get an energy that someone's mother or, or a female matriarch has passed on. And you could be dealing with the anniversary of that. You could be feeling a little depressed during that time. Because you see how he's looking down, kind of gloomy. It doesn't matter how long ago this person has, how long ago it's been since this person has passed. That could be coming, those emotions could be coming to the surface. During Mercury, Mercury retrograde, making you feel a little depressed. Also, someone's mother may not be well. And again, I'm not claiming that, but I'm just telling you what I'm getting here. Somebody's mother may not be um, doing well. They may be feeling sick, but I feel like they're going to fight and pull through it. If this is someone who's sick right now, like they've been sick, I feel like they're going to fight and pull through it. Honestly. Um, let's see what's at the bottom of the deck here. See? Woohoo! Look at They're going to pull through it, y'all. Yes, ma'am. Because you know we have reversals here. Look at that. We got reversals. This person is going to pull through it. Wow. So right now, I'm going to say again, during this retrograde, a lot of you guys are going to find yourself. A lot of you guys are going to find your purpose or you're going to be really searching for your purpose. Because I want you to look. And you see how you have the difference with this same card? But look at this lantern. All you see is the glow coming from it. And his lantern, what you got? A star. Stars wish in, in tarot, stars the wish fulfillment and healing energy. So you guys have are manifesting some type of wish fulfillment. 
You're getting ready to see it. But it's like, if you notice how he's looking down with the lantern is up, he has his eyes closed. That goes back to the message I said in the very beginning. You guys need to be a little more optimistic because you fought long and hard. I'm talking about this. I'm talking about you fought hard to get to this place that you're in, a place of healing, a place of recognizing your own strength. I, I feel like a lot of you all don't give yourself enough credit is what I'm getting. Like, this is heavy. But you're making it through. You've made it through. And I feel like a lot of you all need to give yourself a pat on the back. That's what I'm getting right here. You need to give yourself a pat on the back. You need to give yourself your prop. You just do. Because you ain't nothing to fuck with. I feel like you guys are, are more powerful than you're giving yourself credit for. You guys are amazing. This energy is dope to me. I know this may not seem like it is, but I don't feel like this is saying that you're going to be carrying this heavy load. It's like you're acknowledging, like you're facing yourself and like, damn, I did that. I did that. I did that. I got through that. I'm powerful as hell. You guys are, man, I'm proud of y'all. And I'm proud of me too. You know, this this is like, this, this is not just a certain group. This is the time frame. This is the energy that a lot of people are going to be going through over the next three weeks. You definitely may feel challenged during this time, but look here, you pulling through it. Oh, this is saying you're going to pull through it, but you know, it's going to be things that's coming to the surface that's going to test you. And when I said that the time was 45, 45, someone could be 45 years old. Someone's birthday could be on the fourth or the fifth. Something significant also could be happening in the next 45 days. Like if you look at the calendar and see what date that falls on, something very significant can be happening in the next 45 days as well. Okay? So thank you so much, Collective, for watching Queen Airbender Tarot. And until next time, take care and be well and happy manifesting. Bye.